now in the middle of this difficult place, in the middle of this hard place, in the middle of a situation that I don't want to be in, in the middle of this storm, I look over and I realize that you're in the boat with me and I can say if this storm don't cease and if the winds keep on blowing in my life, my soul has been anchored in the Lord. Ever wonder, how does the word apply to your life? Can it change you? Yes, it can. The word of God can change your life. First, you got to forgive. You got to let the last people go so that you can move on in your life. When you don't forgive, the person you really affect is you. You're the one that's stuck. A lot of times, those people aren't even thinking about us. So how can I do it? How can I actually walk in forgiveness? How can I actually move on so that my relationship is everything it's supposed to be? Stay right here. Don't turn that channel. Stay right here. We're going to talk about the best way for you to forgive. All right, turn with me in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 18. We're going to begin reading in verse number 21. Very familiar passage of Scripture, if you're familiar with your Bible at all. Matthew 18, 21, and it reads, As then Peter came to Jesus and asked him, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times? And Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And as he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 talents, that's a great sum of money, 10,000 talents was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. And the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged. I'll pay you back everything. And the servant's master took pity on him canceled the debt and let him go. When that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. That's a few, that's a little bit, a few dollars. And he grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. And his fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me, I'll pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had that man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. And when the other servants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and went and told their master everything that had happened. And then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you? In anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. And turn with me to James chapter 1. Now, if you have a streamer, put something there in Matthew chapter 18. We are going to turn back to it in a moment. We're going to begin reading in verse number 2. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, my sisters, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. And perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. The title of my message this morning is, First, Forgive. Here in James chapter 1 and verse 2, the word says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. One of the things that's so amazing about God and through his word is that not only will the Lord tell you what to do, but he actually has the nerve to tell you how to feel. 
God is just, he's so being God that he's saying, not only am I going to tell you what to do, but I'm going to tell you how to feel about something. In the telling you what to do, I'm even going to tell you how to feel about a thing. And we've been saying that that's what kingdom is. Kingdom is godly action, doing what God says to do. Doing what he says to do. As we've been defining kingdom here at the very beginning of the year, we've been saying that's what kingdom is. It's godly action. Doing what the Lord tells me to do. So I realize that at times in him telling me what to do, not only is he going to tell me what to do with my body and and, and how to act, but he's actually going to tell me how to feel about something. He's saying, I actually want you to consider it pure joy when you face trials. Consider it pure joy when you go through a difficulty. I want you to feel a certain way about something. I don't know if that's ever, I don't know if that, if, if that, if you've ever had anybody in your life that did that to you, maybe in your past, maybe you had a parent or a grandparent or a, 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 a auntie or an uncle or somebody that would say to you, like the Lord is saying to you today, he's saying, smile. He's saying, fix your face. I don't know if anyone ever said that to you, fix your face. They were saying to you, They are going to tell you what to do with your emotions. They'll tell you, dry it up. You got a good cry that's just getting ready to come. And they say, dry it up. Fix your face. And you have to. And now you are swallowing and you are trying to smile around that lump in your throat. If if you had somebody in your life that did that to you. They did you a service. They blessed you because one of the things you have to learn in life is how to fix your face. I don't know if you've ever had a boss or a supervisor that's sitting there saying something to you. And on the inside, you are saying, talk to the hand. But on the outside, you have to be like, oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. On the inside, you might be thinking, you don't even know what you're talking about. I know your job better than you. You should even be in your situation. But you can't say that to them. So you just have to be, you have to put a face on in which you smile. And, and I know you call, we might call it being fake or phony, but it's not about being fake. It's about survival. Can't show everybody everything that's going on the inside of you on your face. You got to keep your face together. You can't let everything come across your face. You're going to have to be able to say, well, just because that's how I feel doesn't mean that's what I'm going to express. See, if you had somebody, if you had a grandmama or mama or somebody that, met, that did that to you, they helped you because they even helped you in your relationship with the Lord. Because the Lord said, I'm going to tell you what to be happy about. Now, what makes you happy? What, what makes you laugh? What brings you joy? In, here in James chapter 1, the Lord is saying, I'll tell you what, I want one of your sources of joy to be trials, tests, difficulties, hardship. I want you to consider it pure joy. When you come and you're saying, I know that's not what we do because when we're sitting here saying, every time I think, every time I think, I thank you, Lord. And when Minister Todd is saying, he's saying, he opened up a door for you. He made a way for you. But that's what we're thinking. We're thinking all the good stuff. We're not thinking, yes, every time I think about the trial, every time I think about the hard thing I'm going through, every time I think about the fact that I don't have a job right now, I just want to say thank you. That's not what we do. Ain't nobody in here shout, thank you, I ain't got no job, thank you. Nobody shouts, nobody wants to shout over the trial. You're not saying, Lord, right now, in the middle of this difficult place, in the middle of this hard place, in the middle of a situation that I don't want to be in, in the middle of this storm, I look over and I realize that you're in the boat with me. And I can say, if this storm don't cease and if the winds keep on blowing in my life, my soul has been anchored in the Lord. Lord, I know you can deliver me, but even if you don't, I ain't going nowhere. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Oh, another level altogether. The Lord said, yeah, that's right. I want you to get to the place where you look at the hardship and the smile come across your face. And you say, look at the devil trying to steal my relationship. Look at the enemy 
trying to take my baby for I, say I do rebuke in the name of Jesus. If you think that you're gonna bring difficult to me and back me off of my relationship with God, you got another thing coming because I've learned how to worship him in the good times and I've learned how to bless him in the bad times. In the good times, I'll bless his name. In the challenging times, I'll do the same. And everything I've learned to give him thanks. I had to because in this thing called life, there's going to be tests. <laughs> there's going to be trials. There's going to be hardships. Now, all right, Pastor Andy, that sounds great. What does that have to do with forgiving? Well, in my experience, one of my biggest trials has been people. You're going to have to deal with folk. You're going to have to deal with people. You're going to have to know how to forgive. You're not going to be able to survive in this life if you don't know how to forgive people. Because people are going to be a part of the trial that's going to test your faith. And if you don't know how to forgive, if you don't know how to walk in forgiveness, that's one of the reasons why I love that Peter is the one that asked the question here in Matthew chapter 18. Because we know that Peter is special. As a matter of fact, in one breath, he'll be saying something great. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. And in the next breath, he'll be saying something that'll get him rebuked. And in here in Matthew chapter 18, Peter says, well, Lord, you know, how many times do I actually have to forgive my brother up to seven times? Which means that he's thinking seven times or less. Is what Peter's thinking. He's not trying to be spiritual. He actually thinks that up to seven times, you know, it's a good spiritual sounding number, seven, God's number. It's just a good sounding number. And so up to seven, which means that he's thinking probably something like five. What he's thinking. If I'm rolling towards six, I'm getting close to my limit. So, I mean, we, we have to realize this is Peter. He's talking to Jesus now. He knows it's Jesus he's talking to. And so he's, he, when he gives this number, he actually thinks it's a pretty good number. He's saying up to seven. Jesus, what, what are you thinking? How about, how about around six, five, six, seven being the cutoff when I then can shoot them? What, how many times do I have to forgive them? And Jesus' response is not seven times, but 77 times. There's one translation that says 70 times seven, which is what, 490? Which, it, what it means is an unlimited amount of time. There are levels of forgiveness. And, and, and all of us in this room are going to have to be practiced at forgiving and know how to actually flow in these several levels of forgiveness, and they, 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 they get harder as they go. But the first level of forgiveness, number one, is what I call a one-time pass. One-time pass. That's what you do for strangers. That's what you do for people you barely know. That's what you do for somebody that's kind of a new relationship. You know, somebody that's a stranger, you're just giving them a one-time pass. Hey, I forgive them. Somebody cut you off in traffic. Hey, you just forgive them. Oh, you let them go. If you're somebody that's going to be upset Every time a stranger does something to you, and I know that that might sound crazy, but there are some people whose lives are full of stress, come home upset over something that a stranger did. I can't believe that. And, and, and road rage and folks upset over something that somebody they don't know. And I know what that's like because I mean, I, I, I was driving and, and, and I, I guess I wasn't paying enough attention or I wasn't going fast enough for this person and they honked at me and honked at me and honked at me and finally when it turned to two lanes, they passed me and they looked at me and they shook their finger at me. I can't show the finger, but they shook it at me and I was so offended, I wanted to follow them. I know y'all don't even know what I'm talking about, but I, I wanted to follow them, and I followed them for a minute because I wanted them to be a little nervous, but then I said, you know what, Lord, every time I think, I, I got to let them go, I got to forgive them. That's, that's the lowest level of forgiveness is the first type of forgiveness. The second type of forgiveness is what I call, and I've talked about this before, but I call it distant forgiveness. Distant forgiveness. That's where... I forgive you, 
but I don't trust you. I forgive you, but you stay over there. I forgive you, but am I going to put myself in a situation in which you can stab me again? No, because you still have those knives in your hand. So I forgive you. I'm not even forgiving you for you. I'm forgiving you for me. I'm forgiving you because I need to go on. I'm forgiving you because we're not even connected any longer. I forgive you, but we're not connected. As a matter of fact, we may be separated by some stuff. Maybe we're separated by time. You know, it's just, it's 20 years later. We're separated by death. Some of us have folk that we have to forgive, and they're, they're gone. They've died, and we can still wrestle with forgiving them. We're, we're separated by distance. Well, I forgive you, but I, I live in North Carolina. You live in California. So, I mean, even though I forget, we're, we're not going to be, well, we knew each other back in high school. I don't know you now. I'm 40 now. But I, I'm not going to let that person that bullied me I'm going to forgive them. It's a distant forgiveness. I couldn't even reach them if I, knew. if I knew where they, I don't even know how to get them. I don't even have their number. But I'm forgiving them from a distance. You're there. I'm here. I forgive you. I forgive you, but don't come to my house. You hear me? I forgive you, but don't come to my house. You can actually be at that place with, with someone. Well, I forgive you, but I'm don't, don't expect me to trust you. It's distant forgiveness. And then the third level of forgiveness is what I call intimate forgiveness, which is really reconciliation. It's really what that passage in Matthew chapter 5 is talking about. It's, it's intimate forgiveness. You know, if, if you got off, if you're in the end of service and at the altar and you remember you have an aunt with your brother, go be reconciled to your brother. That reconciliation, that's intimate forgiveness. That's where you have to forgive somebody that you have to be connected to. Maybe you're connected to them by blood or you're connected to them. You, you, you got children with the person. And so there's just a certain amount of forgiveness you have to do because you have to be around the person some way. You have a child with them. My wife and I have children together. We don't have to be around each other no matter what. We decided we're just going to have to work it out because we're going to be together either way. So, but if you're here and you, you, have, a child, you have a child with somebody and you're not with them, well, you're going to have to have some kind, of rel- some kind of level of, it can't be totally distant forgiveness because you might see each other at a high school graduation. You might see each other at a wedding. You may see, you, 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 there's going to have to be some kind of closer forgiveness, but this is forgiveness to somebody that I have to be connected to, somebody that, I, someone who has truly repented, somebody that really has changed. They really have changed. They repented, which means they said, well, that's what I was. I'm not that way anymore. I'm changing my mind. I'm going in another direction. I'm going to have to, well, I see the change in that person. And so I, I want to forgive them, but I want to forgive them intimately. I want to be able to be reconciled to that person, somebody that I love. Actually, I actually love the person. And so I, I, want to for, I don't want to forgive them from a distance. I actually want to be able to forgive them intimately. I want to get close to them and, and, be, and be reconciled to them. Who do I forgive? All right, Pastor Andy, I hear you. Who do I forgive? Well, I'm going to give you just a few more thoughts about forgiveness, and I'm going to pray for you. Number one, the first one that you have to forgive, number one, is yourself. You have to forgive yourself. One of the things that I've come to realize is that just because the Lord has forgiven me doesn't mean that I have forgiven me. And one of the reasons why I can struggle with forgiving you is because I haven't even forgiven myself. And yourself, you can be one of the hardest people to forgive. It's one of the reasons why sin can be so terrible. It can be so separating you from God because it's not just that God won't do. It's not that God won't do for you, but you won't believe he will do because the enemy is reminding you of something from your past, some evil that you did, something that's terrible. And you, even though you know the Lord has forgiven you, you haven't forgiven you. Number two, the second group that I'm going to have to forgive is I'm going to forgive people I love. People I love. I have to forgive them. I know that this might sound, this sounds easy, but you know, very often the people closest to you are the first in line for forgiveness. They were closer, so they had better access to hurt you. And very often it's family. It's family. And you not only do you have to forgive them in the past, but you got to forgive them today, and you probably going to have to forgive them tomorrow. 
Because there's some stuff about them, that's just how they are. That's your mama, that's your grandmama, that's your auntie, that's your daddy, that's, your, that's just the way they are. And when they're over, when they're around, they do stuff that can be offensive. And then number three, third group is people I hate. If you've ever had somebody that really abused you or molested you or raped you or violated you in some way, there's something on the inside of you when you think of that person. See, you've got to let that person go. You have to forgive that person. You have to forgive the person you can't stand. Because if you don't forgive them, then not only do they violate you in that moment, but they violate you in your future moments, and they will actually cripple you emotionally from being able to move on and be who you're supposed to be. And I rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. I bind the devil in the name of Jesus. Just because they hurt you does not mean that you can't be a good mama. Just because they hurt you does not mean you can't be a good daddy. Just because they hurt you does not mean you can't fulfill who you're supposed to be in life. The enemy tried to cripple you at an early age and you've got to break free from that. And a part of the way that you break free from that is you've got to lose them and let them go. God's got something great in store for you and it's being blocked by this somebody that you can't let go. Forgiveness is a challenging thing. But not only is it it's something that the Word tells us to do, but it is something that will set you free. Amen. Your whole attitude can change simply by you walking in forgiveness. You're not going to be able to have a relationship if you can't forgive. There's no such thing as a relationship without some pain. The closer we are to each other, the more likely we may hurt one another. So you've got to know how to do this. And the announcer is about to come right now and tell you, what are the steps that you take to make sure that you can forgive somebody? How can you walk in forgiveness? How can you do it? I know it's not easy. To forgive is divine, but you can do it. And we're going to tell you how. We're going to give you the answer so that you can know how to forgive somebody. Hold on just a second. There are three silent killers in America, moving slowly, quietly, and on a mission to wreck relationships, destroy health, and ruin your life. Bitterness, resentment, and unforgiveness take form like a cancer. And before you know it, can kill your creativity, kill your drive, kill relationships, and devour your future. If you have unforgiveness in your heart, isolation sets in, hopelessness creeps in, and slowly over time, it will eat you alive, devouring the passion in your life and robbing you from the experience of love and joy that God says belongs to you as His child. What can you do if these three creep in? How can you overcome them before they overcome you? God says a life of power, purpose, and promise, the abundant life that you deserve, is waiting for you. God declares that the power to forgive, to forget, to move on, to cast your cares and burdens upon Him is waiting to be unleashed inside of you. That you can walk in total freedom from these killers just like Jesus did. And Pastor Andy Thompson is going to show you how to step into this freedom right now. Just because they hurt you does not mean that you can't be a good mama. Just because they hurt you does not mean you can't be a good daddy. Just because they hurt you does not mean you can't fulfill who you're supposed to be in life. The enemy tried to cripple you at an early age, and you've got to break free from that. And a part of the way that you break free from that is you've got to lose them and let them go. In his three-disc DVD series, First Forgive, Pastor Andy will arm you with the practical wisdom and understanding you need to break the chains of unforgiveness. This breakthrough series contains the message you saw today, First Forgive, in its entirety unedited, full of insight and strategy, with practical steps to get you started on the track to stop these killers in their tracks once and for all. And also in this series, you'll receive the messages Forgive and Forget and Reconcile on DVD. You'll laugh, cry, and rejoice over the hours of teaching by Pastor Andy as he shows you how to apply biblical forgiveness to deal with a fractured marriage, a bad boss, family who's abandoned you, friends who have hurt you, and you'll discover the prayers that you can use every day to declare freedom and release those who have hurt you in the past. 
As you break free from the chains of these killers, the entire atmosphere of your life will change and doors will open to the future God says you deserve to live in peace and joy and in prosperity. And to help you move quickly onto the path of freedom from unforgiveness, bitterness, and resentment, Pastor Andy wants to send you three additional bonus items absolutely free for your love gift today. First, you'll receive the first forgive teaching on CD, the audio version of this message to play in the car, at work, or on the go. This makes a great gift for someone you know who may be fighting these three killers of unforgiveness in their own life. Next, you'll get the popular message, Prayer Forgiveness Connection, where you'll discover the precise connection between prayer and forgiveness so you can face these killers in the future and stop them dead in their tracks. Unforgiveness, bitterness, and resentment. See them, stop them, and kill them with prayer. And you'll also get Childlike Change, a timeless and powerful message to build your faith as you trust God and move out of the life of resentment and into the fullness of joy that forgiveness brings. Listen to this message to discover how to have the kind of faith to move the mountains in your life and see restoration in specific areas that your state of bitterness and resentment has broken, stolen, or destroyed. This amazing collection is easily valued at over $50, but Pastor Andy knows that these resources will transform your life. So call now and receive the First Forgive 3 DVD collection, plus all three bonus audio messages, First Forgive, The Prayer Forgiveness Connection, and Childlike Change for your generous love gift of only $35. Now is the time to deal with the bitterness and resentment from unforgiveness in your life, to stop them and overcome them for good. Let Pastor Andy help you see them, stop them, and advance your life to live free, live happy, and reclaim the joy that you deserve. Don't wait. Call now. When we start to talk about forgiveness, painful memories come to us. I know it's hard. We start to think about the people that hurt us, how they did us wrong, how evil it was, and it's hard. I understand. And a part of what we have to do is we have to come together with God and say, Lord, help me. Help me walk this out. Because if I don't forgive that person, really it holds me back. And there is pain that I have and difficulty that I'm wrestling with. I was talking to someone, they're saying they're having nightmares. And I said, it's because you gotta let that person go. And I wanna help you to do that. Matter of fact, let's pray together right now. Let's, let's go to God. Only He can give us the power that we need to be able to actually forgive people the wounds that they've caused us. Let's pray. Lord, I just wanna thank you that you do love us and you care about us. As a matter of fact, you said from the cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. So you know what it's like to have to forgive and to let people go. God, help us. Help us to walk in forgiveness. Give us the grace. Give us that extra little bit of anointing that we need to let people go so that we can have the abundant life that you want us to have. And we thank you right now for the victory that we have in you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, so glad you're with us. Tune in next week. We want to see you. We're going to walk this journey together. We're the family of God. We're going to love one another, and we're going to be what God is calling for us to be.